Hello everyone, God bless you mightily, happy Saturday, welcome to the Good Book Project. Here at this channel, in our chronological Bible in a year video podcast, to the glory of our Lord, we have reached day 322. Today is Saturday, November the 18th, in the year of our Lord, 2023. Yesterday, for day 321, we continued on in the Acts of the Apostles, reading the history of the early church. We read, Peter and John set before the council of the religious leaders of the time testifying about Jesus Christ. We read of the disciples and apostles praying for boldness from the Holy Spirit, sharing all of their wealth all together and selling their possessions. There are many signs and wonders done by the apostles in the name of Jesus. The story of Ananias and his wife Sapphira are mentioned and there are seven new disciples chosen to serve from the apostles and Stephen being one of them is arrested and set before the council where we are set up in our reading today for day 322 in Acts chapter 7. I will pray us into the word for today and we will get right into it. Lord, we come before your throne in the mighty name of Jesus, and we just want to give you all of the glory and honor and thanks. Thank you that you've given us another Saturday in your year 2023, giving us another Saturday as the first thing we do to go through your holy word. And Lord, as we continue on in the book of Acts today, we ask for heavenly wisdom and guidance and understanding as we thread this perfect story together with now the gospels being completed into the history of the early church. We ask for all these things in the name of Jesus, and we all say, Amen. For today, day 322, we continue on in the book of Acts, beginning with chapter 7. And we're going to do this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Word of God reads, Acts 7. The high priest said, are these, thing, are these things so? He said, Brothers and fathers, listen. The glory of God appeared to our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia, before he lived in Haran, and said to him, Get out of your land and away from your relatives, and come into a land which I will show you. And he came out of the land of the Chaldeans and lived in Haran. From there, when his father was dead, God moved him into this land where you are now living. He gave him no inheritance in it, no, not so much as to set his foot on. He promised that he would give it to him for a possession and to his offspring after him. When he still had no child, God spoke in this way, that his offspring would live as aliens in a strange land, and that they would be enslaved and mistreated for four hundred years. I will judge the nation to which they will be in bondage, said God, and after that they will come out and serve me in this place. He gave him the covenant of circumcision. So Abraham became the father of Isaac and circumcised him the eighth day. Isaac became the father of Jacob, and Jacob became the father of the twelve patriarchs. The patriarchs moved with jealousy against Joseph, sold him into, into Egypt. God was with him and delivered him out of all his afflictions, and gave him favor and wisdom before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. He made him governor over Egypt and all his house. Now a famine came over all the land of Egypt and Canaan, and great affliction. Our fathers found no food. But when Jacob heard that there was grain in Egypt, he sent out our fathers the first time. On the second time, Joseph was made known to his brothers, and Joseph's family was revealed to Pharaoh. Joseph sent and summoned Jacob his father and all his relatives, seventy-five souls. Jacob went down into Egypt, and he died, himself and our fathers. And they were brought back to Shechem and laid in the tomb that Abraham bought for a price in silver from the children of Hamor of Shechem. But as the time of the promise came close with which God had sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt, until there arose a different king who didn't know Joseph. The same took advantage of our race and mistreated our fathers, and forced them to abandon their babies, so that they wouldn't stay alive. At that time Moses was born, and was exceedingly handsome to God. He was nourished three months in his father's house. When he was abandoned, 
Pharaoh's daughter took him up and reared him as her own son. Moses was instructed in all the wisdom of the Egyptians. He was mighty in his words and works. But when he was forty years old, it came into his heart to visit his brothers, the children of Israel. Seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended him and avenged him who was oppressed, striking the Egyptian. He supposed that his brothers understood that God, by his hand, was giving them deliverance, but they didn't understand. The day following, he appeared to them as they fought, and urged them to be at peace again, saying, Sirs, you are brothers. Why do you wrong one another? But he who did his neighbor wrong pushed him away, saying, Who made you a ruler and a judge over us? Do you want to kill me as you killed the Egyptian yesterday? Moses fled at this saying and became a stranger in the land of Midian, where he became the father of two sons. When forty years were fulfilled, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai, in a flame of fire in a bush. When Moses saw it, he wondered at the sight. As he came close to see, the voice of the Lord came to him, I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Moses trembled and dared not look. The Lord said to him, Take off your sandals, for the place where you stand is holy ground. I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt, and have heard their groaning. I have come down to deliver them. Now come, I will send you into Egypt. This Moses whom they refused, saying, Who made you a ruler and a judge? God has sent him as both a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel who appeared to him in the bush. This man led them out, having worked wonders and signs in Egypt, in the Red Sea, and in the wilderness for forty years. This is that Moses who said that to the children of Israel, The Lord our God will raise up a prophet for you from amongst your brothers like me. This is he who was in the assembly in the wilderness with the angel that spoke to him on Mount Sinai, and with our fathers, who received living revelations to give to us, to whom our fathers wouldn't be obedient, but rejected him and turned back in their hearts to Egypt, saying to Aaron, Make us gods that, we, that will go before us. For as for this Moses, who led us out of the land of Egypt, we don't know what has become of him. They made a calf in those days and brought a sacrifice to the idol and rejoiced in the works of their hands. But God turned away and gave them up to serve the army of the sky, as it is written in the book of the prophets. Did you offer to me slain animals and sacrifices forty years in the wilderness, O house of Israel? You took up the tabernacle of Moloch, the star of your god, Rephen, the figures which you made to worship. So I will carry you away beyond Babylon. Our fathers had the tabernacle of the testimony in the wilderness, even as he who spoke to Moses commanded him to make it according to the pattern that he had seen, which also our fathers in their turn brought in with Joshua when they entered into the possession of the nations whom God drove out before the face of our fathers to the days of David, who found favor in the sight of God and asked to find a habitation for the God of Jacob. But Solomon built him a house. However, the Most High doesn't dwell in temples made with hands, as the prophet says, Heaven is my throne, and the earth a footstool for my feet. What kind of house will you build me, says the Lord? Or... What is the place of my rest? Didn't my hand make all these things? You stiff-necked people, you stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit. As your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets didn't your fathers persecute? They killed those who foretold the coming of the righteous one, of whom you have now become betrayers and murderers. You received the law as it was ordained by angels and didn't keep it. Now when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed at him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Spirit, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing on the right hand of God, and said, Behold, 
I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears, then rushed at him with one accord. They threw him out of the city and stoned him. The witnesses placed their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul. They stoned Stephen as he called out, saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. He knelt down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, don't hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep. Acts 8 Saul was consenting to his death. A great persecution arose against the assembly which was in Jerusalem in that day. They were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except for the apostles. Devout men buried Stephen and lamented greatly over him. But Saul ravaged the assembly, entering into every house and dragged both men and women off to prison. Therefore those who were scattered abroad went around preaching the word. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed to them the Christ. The multitudes listened with one accord to the things that were spoken by Philip when they heard and saw the signs which he did. For unclean spirits came out of many of those who had them. They came out crying with a loud voice. Many who had been paralyzed and lame were healed. There was great joy in that city. But there was a certain man, Simon by name, who used to practice sorcery in the city and amazed the people of Samaria, making himself out to be some great one, to whom they all listened, from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is that great power of God. They listened to him because for a long time he had amazed them with his sorceries. But when they believed Philip preaching good news concerning God's kingdom and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Simon himself also believed. Being baptized, he continued with Philip. Seeing signs and great miracles occurring, he was amazed. Now when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them, who, when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet he had fallen on none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of Christ Jesus. Then they laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Now when Simon saw that the Holy Spirit was given through the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, that whomever I lay ha my hands on may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to, the, to him, May your silver perish with you, because you thought you could obtain the gift of God with money. You have neither part nor lot in this matter, for your heart isn't right before God. Repent therefore of this your wickedness, and ask God if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see that you are in the, pos in the poison of bitterness and in the bondage of iniquity. Simon answered, Pray for me to the Lord, that none of the things which you have spoken happen to me. They therefore, when they had testified and spoken the word of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem and preached the good news to many villages of the Samaritans. Then an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise, and go towards the south to the way that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert. He arose and went. And behold, there was a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was over all her treasure, who had come to Jerusalem to worship. He was returning and sitting in his chariot, and was reading the prophet Isaiah. The spirit said to Philip, Go near and join yourself to this chariot. Philip ran to him and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and said, Do you understand what you are reading? He said, How can I unless someone explains it to me? He begged Philip to come up and sit with him. Now the passage of the scripture which he was reading was this, He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, as a lamb before his shearer is silent. So he doesn't open his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. Who will declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. The eunuch answered Philip, Who is the prophet talking about? About himself or about someone else? 
Philip opened his mouth and beginning from this scripture preached to him about Jesus. As they went on the way, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Behold, here is water. What is keeping me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stand still, and they both went down into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. When, the, when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away, and the eunuch didn't see him any more, for he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Azotus. Passing through, he preached the good news to all the cities until he came to Caesarea. And thank you, God, for your holy word. So we read here of Stephen, who is basically summarizing the entire first five books of the Bible all the way to Joshua and to the prophets, giving his case for why the religious leaders are turning their hearts away from God when they don't realize that everything that had been pointed in the Old Testament, or in his case, the Torah and the prophets, everything was pointing to Christ Jesus, who Moses spoke about, who the prophets all spoke about. And when the religious leaders are called out on this, they are cut to the heart because he knows they are beginning to believe that he is chastising them. They then throw him out of the city and stone him. And Stephen is the first martyr of the church. But while Stephen is looking up, he sees our Lord Jesus at the right hand of God, looking down on him, and he says, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And then he prays to not hold this sin against them. And at the end, he is killed by the religious leaders and the people, and he is the first martyr. Someone who is in attendance seeing this is Saul. Saul is a man, a religious leader, who is, in the next chapter we read in chapter 8, ravaging the church and ravaging all the people, throwing both men and women into prison. We see now the word of God being spread out further and further when we read of the word of God being spread in Samaria, and then we see of the apostles, the laying on the hands is what gives the Holy Spirit to the people. We read that there is a story of a eunuch from Ethiopia who was reading the scroll of Isaiah, who Philip, who had once been seen with the apostles, asked in his heart to be filled with the Holy Spirit and went to turn away from his ways of trying to buy the gift of the Holy Spirit from Peter and John. So Philip being filled now, the Spirit shows him when the eunuch from Ethiopia on the way who is the treasurer for the queen of Ethiopia, Candace, he reads the scroll of Isaiah and says, how can I understand this unless someone explains it to me? And Philip, being filled with the Holy Spirit, tells him of how Isaiah the prophet prophesied about the Christ Jesus, which we have read ourselves way long ago, earlier in our Chronological Bible in a Year video podcast. They both are baptized when there is a well, the eunuch says, why wait? Let's get baptized here. Philip and him are both baptized, and the word of God is spreading throughout the realm. And with that, day 322 is complete, and I'm so happy you were able to make it out today to hear the word of God. I will pray us out of the word for today, and we will go throughout the rest of our day. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Day 323 is tomorrow which is a Sunday, so make it out to church tomorrow to hear the word of God with other brothers and sisters in Christ. And I will see you tomorrow. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance toward you and give you peace.